something else and this and that to make the Sammy's. Oh my God. This is incredible. I got some like do not touch. Those, some of them roll, so if somebody bumps the table, they're all gonna take off. So <laughs> how do we, I got some do not touch. Might, might be a good idea. Stickers, but I don't wanna ruin that table. I don't know if it will or not. Let's see, camera. They're just kind of like a vinyl sticker. I think I feel right back off. But. Don't know. It's interesting. Good luck. <laughs> it's just so hard. This is incredible. A With tribute to Stan. Number threes, or thereabouts. Holy cow. That number 11. 48 Mercury was like the last minute. He just told me, oh yeah, I drove one of them and, and it was a real pretty green, so that's... <laughs> you must have ran this two, three, and four, then the Pino, then the Glovelin's Camaro. Okay. Had to bend. And I'm a 38. <laughs> That's all I did when I was a kid. That's how you learned to read. That's how you learned to read. I still can't read, but I can take a picture. <laughs> That's, we had, yeah, the only time we have time to read is in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. you know, all, the, all the programs, programs are in the bathroom. Up. Yeah, stacked up. <laughs> the rest of the time we're working. How are you doing, buddy? <laughs> Look at that. Oh, my Jeff. goodness. Wow. I know he was doing something That's like this. Oh. oh, my heavens. Now oh, that's cool. <laughs> That was the first version of the CUDA, and that was the second version of the CUDA. And you were yellow the second time. That is amazing. That is so cool. This is what race, this is Daytona. Yeah, that was the first Ford at Daytona. Well, that was the first Daytona. Yeah, that, that made... would have been the first okay. Daytona. What's that about? And that was the second yeah. one. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And then, got, then this is, is what you did, and There's then this CUDA. is what you yeah. did. Yeah. Because the first CUDA was blue. Yep. First scooter was blue. Matter of fact, they made you put the one. Did, did you have to put the one on this car after you got there? Because yeah. it didn't fit right. They yeah. made you put a one on it yeah. when you were there. That was the first GTO. This was my actually second race car. Is that Number your first Lemon race car? This one here? Oh, yeah, here's your first one right here. There's your 30 30. Oh, yeah, not 30. <laughs> this is my second one, yeah. That's a first race car, and this is a second race car. And then the 68 is the third race car. And then it's probably one yeah. of these, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, which it's one? It's 55 Chevy. Okay. And then the 57 Chevrolet. What'd you do? Floor it and turn left? <laughs> He's still doing that. He's still doing that. And then, Me too. And then you drove Smokey's car, right? Uh, Smokey's car was a 60 Pontiac. Or oh, 60, this one here? Yeah, Tracy's yeah 60 sure Chevrolet. Okay. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> you got some pictures of that. I just took a video, you guys all talking about Oh, that, that'd be good. Yeah, but you took your Torino. Your Torino, you just come home and took the Torino body off of it and put the Mustang body on it and then raced the car from Daytona. Your ARCA car is actually the car you yeah, raced. It was the thing. second year. I just took the. Hey, do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. I, I want to know if you remember winning the hundred lapper at Erie, and you had a little light on the roof. Joey you can never find a car on the racetrack. So you put a light on. So I had to put a light on. It's easier to talk about it. When there isn't ten thousand people here. I don't know if that'll work, but. Just watching the. Uh... Artists that come here, that's what they do, they're selling their CD. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh 
there's Greg over there. That's yeah. your, one of your troublemakers. Yeah, old Greg. <laughs> Glad you're here. Welcome, Squirt. Thank you. Oh, Mr. John. I had intended to. Just, uh, How are you? I just didn't you make You drove a long way. Oh, I, I used to do it every Saturday yeah. night. Just a little way. <laughs> I heard that, but I, I don't know. I don't know what. Ronnie drove this car one time. That one there? Yep. Oh, down there. That Ford, no, it's a Ford. Julian's yeah, Ford. He parked it up on top of the fence. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. That really happened. I drove that one once. You drove his Mustang for him? Yeah. Uh, from our perspective, in many senses, movie different than, than the rest of them because it's principally Jim talking. I see that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's necessarily good. Precisely why it's different. But Jim has a, 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 a myriad of stories, and it's a love letter. I mean, from Randy's to the community, it's a love letter to you, Jim, to Gene to the family, Scott family, and that was our really what we tried to accomplish. I'm curious, you're sitting right there next to your wife and listening to some stories that you hadn't told, at least told us 10 or more years ago. What'd you think of all this? I think you three did a fantastic job of putting that together. Uh, some of the interviews, I kind of cringed. When I... <laughs> so did we. <laughs> I can't believe I said that, you know. But uh, but most of it was was a hundred percent the way I feel. the The racing game has uh, changed over the years so much. What David does today and what them do today, Ryan. It's just, it's uh, 360 degrees from what we did. And you could see them rollable pictures, uh, almost hilarious. You, I don't know how you call that racing. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, that's what there was. That, that, was the, that was the only racing there was, really, at the time. NASCAR was doing some big time racing down south, but uh, that was a whole different element. And, we didn't even know that was happening up here in the woods, you know. So that racing for us was what it was. Did it strike you that really, but for a break or two, but for a guy betting, what, you had a bet, and he conned you into joining him as part of a bet, your career could have changed tremendously. Oh, yeah. It, uh, can you imagine if the guy come up and wanted to race horses or something? <laughs> I mean, I got a daughter that races, hor or races horses, but man, that ain't for me, you know. <laughs> I mean, and and it did say in there that <clears throat> what we have accomplished, uh, that's probably the main thing. What we've accomplished as a family has come out of the racing because uh, all the important people that I met that changed my life completely, the Boo Sinks and the Pete Parkers and the, I mean, the, the, the list goes on, Rainers and, and, and every one of the drivers, uh, Squirt Johns, Frank Ruman, them kind of guys, they taught us what we know. And we never had no education. We didn't know how to, to add. The only thing we had was a high school education in your two hands. And my dad made sure that you got up at 6 o'clock in the morning. You went and did the chores. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and you didn't get breakfast until you got your work done. You know, you got up in the morning, put your pants on, you went out and worked until... Then you went in and ate breakfast, and then you worked the rest of the day. And it's also, he who works hardest has the most. So we've worked hard at what we've done. And uh, we've been moderately successful, except buying a racetrack. I don't know if that's being moderately successful. <laughs> yeah, but uh, that's a hell of a good way to spend all the other money that you made all your life. <laughs>
So David, you had a chance. Can you speak on behalf of the family here? You saw this uh, first time. You've seen this. And we've had a collage of not only videos, pictures, some interviews by the family members themselves. What was your reaction as you're sitting there in the second row? Well, definitely when Dad came to the garage, we were getting ready to go. I don't even remember where we were going, but the state line wasn't racing at the time. So Mom and Dad stopped in, and it's a big secret. We went and looked at the racetrack, and I was like, I said a lot of stuff, and none of it was positive. Uh, but uh, as you can see, how happy Dad was on the first night of racing. And I explain that as Dad looked like the 10 year old kid that was going to get for Christmas what he wanted the most. And Mom looked like the mother of 10 who had $8 and it was Christmas Eve and she still had to buy all the presents. <laughs> She was fit to be tied, and he could, you could have beat that smile off his face with a shovel. He was so happy. But uh, they made it successful. I mean, I think it's way better than it was. Uh, it's far from neglected now. Uh, I'm proud of what they've accomplished and how hard they've worked. Not that I approve of it in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> but the next time somebody complains about track conditions, I'm going to whip out a video rollable. <laughs> Is that nobody was bitching about that when they were there. So, you know, I mean, we don't have a bridge at State Line, but maybe that's something we should talk about. That's that's excellent. But by, by, by the way, uh, as you were uh, wishing occasionally at the driver ill will and not one understanding the results, obviously Randy Anderson made it good for you to win that 100 lapper, Chuck Piazza, you got the trophy. Squirt Johns uh, was up there in the, in the seats, wondering if you're gonna give him back the tire you forced him to blow. <laughs> <laughs> I will admit, <laughs> I said I wished your damn tire would fall off and it fell right off. <laughs> Maybe God does answer prayers. Yeah. So a tire is coming, Squirt, just in case you didn't. Okay. So just as a uh, perspective, what story did we sort of miss? Or maybe a concern that you had, Jim, that maybe a story that was going to show up that didn't show up. Uh, what, do we, what did we miss here today? I don't know. You did a excellent panoramic deal of my whole life. You know, it was, it started at the Roller Bowl. Uh, actually, I think the last race I ran was at 24 hours at Watkins Glen. Uh, you covered it all. And uh, the, the, you did the Texas race, that was a turning point. My, always wanted to try asphalt, and that was a chance to do that. And I impressed Julian, uh, the rest is history. Once I impressed Julian, he gave me a decent ride. He was uh, a lot smarter than most people gave him credit for. And he understood what the car had to have in it to make it go fast. He could screw that up really easy because he'd get it really good and then he would want to make it faster and he would change it. And that was the only problem him and I ever had. And, uh, but it was, it was because he was trying to make it back. And sometimes you back up when you do that. So, uh, but it, uh, you covered it pretty well. If you had to do anything differently, would there be anything? I don't know what it would be. I, I would have got smarter quicker. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if you know, uh, hindsight's 2020, <clears throat> but if we as racers in the 60s and the 70s had any idea what makes these cars go fast today, we'd have been dangerous. Because, uh, you know, Frank Roman was ahead of his time 
uh, I've always said that he built stuff light way back when. I couldn't see the forest for the trees. You know, he made, he took weight off of the car. We put weight on the car. Well, it took me 20 years to realize that it cost money to move weight and to stop weight. He already had that figured out, and, uh, and we couldn't see it. Jim Scott ended the movie by saying that Stalang Speedway might be your legacy. I think it will be, and I'm just so thrilled today that we had a chance to share that legacy and the family's legacy here. Ladies and gentlemen, Jim Scott.